practicing multiple numbers together, and we're going to discover some things. So first, I want you to figure out what 4 times 5 times 2 is. Pause the video and try to figure it out on your own. All right, so whatever your answer is, some of you might have done it this way. Some of you might have said, hey, what is four times five? And then you multiplied it by two. So what you would really have done is, you would have done four times five first. That's why I put parentheses around that. And then you would have multiplied by two. And what would you have gotten? Well, the four times five part, that is of course 20. And then you multiply that times two, and you would get 40 which of course would be correct. Four times five times two is indeed equal to 40. Now what I want you to do now is as quickly as possible, try to figure out what five times two times four is. Really quick, pause the video, try to figure that out. Well, some of you might have tried, and you might have done it in a similar way where you tried to figure out what five times two is first, and you said, okay, five times two is equal to 10. And then I'd multiply that times four. And then you would say, well, gee, this is the same thing as I got last time. Is there something interesting going on? And the interesting thing that you might realize is in both cases, we're multiplying the same three numbers. We are just doing it in a different order. Here we multiplied four times, we wrote it out in a different order, four times five times two. Here we wrote five times two times four. Here we did the four times five first. Here we did the five times two first. But notice, we got the same result. And I encourage you, pause this video. Try to multiply these numbers in any order. Maybe you do two times, maybe you do two times four first. In fact, let's just do that. Let's do two times four, two times four, and then multiply that by five. What is this going to be equal to? Well, you might notice again, this is two times four is eight. You multiply that times five. Well, once again, we got 40. So you might see a pattern here. It doesn't matter which order we, multi we multiply these things in. In fact, you could write, you could write four times five times two. You could do the four times five first, four times five times two. Or you could do four times five times two. So you could do four times five times two. So it doesn't matter which order you multiply these things in. In every case, you are going to get 40. Now there's a very fancy term for this, the associative property of multiplication. But the main realization is, and it's not just true with three numbers. In fact, you've seen something similar with two numbers where it doesn't matter what order you multiply them in. But what you see is with three numbers, and even if you tried it with four or five, or really a, a, a thousand numbers being multiplied together, as long as you're just multiplying them all, it doesn't matter what order understanding of multiplication. And just as an example, we're going to use four times seven. And some of you might know what four times seven is, but even in this case, I think you might get something from this video because we're gonna think about how you can break down a multiplication question into simpler parts. And that's going to be useful well beyond four times seven. It's going to be useful in your future when you're tackling more and more complicated things. Now there's a couple of ways that we can visualize four times seven. My favorite way is to visualize it with angry cats. So let's bring on the angry cats. Yep, they're still angry. And we can see that this is a representation of four times seven. We have four rows right over here, four rows. And each of those rows have seven cats. And so you can see that right over here. Each of those rows have seven cats. Some people would call this a four by seven grid or a four by seven array, whatever, however you'd want to view it. But if someone were to ask you what's the total number of cats, it would be four rows times seven columns, four times seven. Now another way to represent four times seven is also with a tape diagram. You might see something like this where here we're visualizing it as seven fours. Or you could view it as four plus four plus four plus four plus four plus four plus four. Now that's all well and good and you can add that up if you like. But what I promised you is that we would figure out ways to break down things that might simplify things in the future. Well, what if you didn't know what four times seven is, but you knew what four times five is and you knew what four times two is? Well, what's interesting is that seven is five plus two. 
So what if we tried to first figure out this many cats, so four rows and five columns, right over there, and then we tried to figure out this many cats, four rows and two columns. And you can see that it's the exact same number of cats. So one way to think about it is four times seven is the exact same thing as four times, and I'm going to use parentheses, and that just means to do that part first, is equal to four times. Instead of seven, I could write that as five plus two, because that's what seven is. So all this is saying is four times seven is the same thing as four times five plus two, where you do the five plus two first, because we have those parentheses around it, and five plus two is indeed equal to seven. And we can see that that is equivalent to the total number of cats that we have here, which we could view as what we just circled off in this orangish pink color, which would be four rows of five. So that would be equal to four times five. Four times five. And then to that, we can add this second group of cat heads, or angry cat heads, and that is four rows of two. So that's four times two. And we could put parentheses if we want, just to make it a little bit more readable. Now why did I do that? Well, some folks might find four times five a little bit more straightforward. I could skip count by five. I can go five, 10, 15, 20. Also, four times two might be a little bit more straightforward. And so it could be easier to say, hey, this is just going to be four times five, which is 20, plus four times two, which is equal to eight. And so that is just going to be equal to 28. And you could have thought about it the same way down here with what is sometimes called a tape diagram. We could say, all right, if I 